language. So this is, this is Matthew Ship talking about Keith Jarrett. On his blog, yeah. Well, what do you think the age difference is? Probably about 20 years. 20 years, two decades. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think, I think Matthew's wrong. Ethan Iverson responded to it, and he said, truthfully, that you know Keith's music immediately, meaning he does have his own vernacular, his own language. Mm. So what, what was Ship's uh, main uh, criticism? I mean, the thrust of his criticism was, he wouldn't admit it, but I think it was, relate, I think it relates more to Keith's antics, his abrasive personality than anything else. I think Matthew probably just finds that to be prima donna, diva behavior, and then allows that to bias his musical criticism. Uh, okay. All right. And it also seemed to be... I mean, you know, it's just at, at this point, criticizing Keith for his vamps and his, you know, his, uh, I think he used the word puerile or he used the word just watery or, or kind of pseudo impressionistic. Basically, he called, them a, he called his vamps simpleton for vamps. But, okay. You don't agree with any of that? I, I think that is just. It's a very myopic way to look at, at his play because there's just so much contrast in any given, you know, concert or even his miniatures that, that I think criticizing his vamps on the basis that they're simple or watered down is to miss the point of the way his music develops. It's not the only thing. Hmm. Well, what, what, do you, what do you like? What do you like? analysis to me. Okay, so what do you what do you like about Matthew Schiff's music? Well, it's obviously very different from from Jarrett. So what do you what do you like about Matthew Schiff? Well, he, he what does he bring to the table? Uh, he kind of follows the vein of Monk. He's in that that evolutionary evolutionary line to me. Mm -hmm. uh, he really seems to embrace the percussive elements of the piano, and he really has these chord clusters that are his signature. To me, it's his, it's his chords. Um, it's, you know, where Ethan Iverson, the bad plus, his trademark is kind of these major chord juxtapositions, they kind of by tonality. Matthew's signature from Hamad is these very dense clusters that seem almost pointillistic. They're just these splashes of color on a canvas, and they relate to each other conceptually, but it's not a linear way of creating a line or even a harmonic framework. It's just very much these stark, uh, kind of, uh, you know, just shotgun blasts of music. Yeah that uh, I just really like. I, I think they just are very interesting, they're very striking, yeah. and very uh, unusual, very unique. But he also seems to, Ship does some things which are almost like uh, fusion, right? Yeah. Rock. Yeah, kind of, he, he and T Craig Taborn are kind of in the same vein of, of using electronic instruments yeah. in a transgressive sense, right. you know, creating distortion, right. just ugly, ugly sounds that somehow, you know, kind of progress into... But it's really like a kind of a fusion though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it's fusion. There's one piece that I saw that he had done which I loved. I forget the name of it. Got the most hits on YouTube. Yeah. But it's, it's straight out like a fusion rock piece almost. Yeah. The drums is going in like what do you call it, 4-4? I mean, it boom, yeah. boom, boom, and it's not... And so, I mean, it was really good and really exciting to listen to. But of yeah. course, Keith Jarrett would never do anything like that. Not yeah, it's... So. Um, it, you, it may have been some of his earlier work. Uh, he had a lot of that kind of rock fusion, you know, inspiration early on. I yeah. Now it's a little more neo, almost neoclassical. It's very uh, gritty. 